Oh, Sweet. Oh. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Legendary Chiropractor Podcast. Oh, my goodness. It is going to be a heck of a night. I am so looking forward to this. I can't wait to ask questions and just just pick Cassidy's and Dr. Ryan's bo- uh, Dr. Ryan Bones' brains, and it is going to be, that was a mouthful, it is going to be absolutely epic tonight, it is going to be awesome, ask questions, please engage with us, like this, comment, share, love it, I don't care what you do, but let's get some people on here, um, let's get some questions generated, and students, chiropractic students and recent graduates, if you are watching this, Dr. Ryan was on, I think last season it was, and, or two seasons ago, last season, somewhere in there. It, we've done so many, but um, he was on and he just blew blew the ground off of the roof off of everything that I was expecting. And I can't wait. And that's why on summer camp and summer camp, we went to Miami. We saw, I met Dr. Ka- uh, Dr. Ryan and Cassidy. And I was like, hey guys, we got to get both of you on this <laughs> podcast at the same time because I mean, you both are dynamite human beings. You both are on fire for not only chiropractic, but on the entrepreneurial mindset and spirit. And that's what we're looking for, right? And that's what this whole podcast is about, is bringing together aspiring entrepreneurs and chiropractors and recent graduates to really, you know, better yourself, but also better your communities. Um, so let's do this. Uh, ask questions please engage. And I see we already have a question. This is awesome. This is going to be fun tonight. Um, So (laughs) please, please, please bear with me. We are going to thank our initial sponsors and then we will be right back. I'll read you off the entire list of topics that we are going to get into tonight. And then I'll let uh, Dr. Ryan and Cassidy introduce themselves officially and we'll hit the ground running. This is going to be a lot of fun. Thank you guys. And we'll be right back. To Inspire Women is the elite boutique coaching company for chiropractors who are looking to live life and run business in a way that is personal, unique, and authentic. They focus on business systems and money mindset mastery so you can pay down debt, be more profitable, and serve more people. Their goal is to empower you to achieve success by your own rules and your own definition. Head to toinspirewomen.com now because they know there's a better way. Cairo HD superior cloud-based practice management software. Cairo HD is a user-friendly, all-in-one EHR solution built with one mission, to help you run your practice like a boss. Learn more at CairoHD.com. Total Clinic Solutions is your go-to source for purchasing both brand new and refurbished chiropractic equipment, as well as phone support for repairs and maintenance. Call Derek and allow him to combine your wishes and his 23 years of chiropractic equipment expertise to find what's best for you and your patients at 704-622-4089 or head to totalclinicsolutions.com now. It's time that chiropractors look beyond spinal alignments and measure the nerve connections that keep our patients feeling strong and performing at their peak. CLA designed the Insight Scanning Technologies to transform exams and generate powerful reports that give practitioners the certainty they have been searching for. Learn how CLA has partnered with practices around the world by going to InsightCLA.com. Spinal hygiene products are designed to educate your patients on the importance of lifetime spinal care. To learn more about how spinal hygiene products work and to download the patient education material for free, visit SpinalHygiene.co. Again, that's spinalhygiene.co. Easily share your passion for chiropractic and look good doing it with Above Down Apparel, offering a premium lineup of principled apparel that's impossibly soft, sustainably sourced, and chiropractic AF. Visit abovedown.co and follow them on Instagram to learn more and score yourself some sweet chiro swag. SCED is the all-in-one system that allows for amazing control and flexibility of your scheduling. Yes, your next new hire. Every aspect of when and where you service your customers is at your command. SCED is tightly integrated with your existing EHR system. 
This software was made by a chiropractor specifically for chiropractic. No joke. Go check out their latest care plan feature by heading to go.sked.life slash legendary pod. Health Business Builders covers every aspect of building a health business, both online and in a brick and mortar environment. Dr. Dan Sullivan and Dr. Dave Tuhill and their team will help you on a regular basis to develop an in-depth strategy, plan, and accountability to not only assemble a plan, but also make it happen. Head to healthbusinessbuilders.com so they can help you get the results you never thought were possible. Thank you for allowing this brief disruption to take place. And now back to the program. Yes, let's go. Hello, everybody. Again, if you're just joining us, welcome to the Legendary Chiropractor Podcast. I am so, so stoked. This is Dr. Ryan Bones, second time on the podcast, and Cassidy Bones, first time on the podcast. And we are going to break it down with both of them tonight. And without further ado, guys, I want to just say we met at summer camp. If no one's, if if you haven't been to summer camp and you're watching this, please get there in 2020. It's a great place. It's a great time, and it's a great place to be around other like-minded entrepreneurs and chiropractors and anyone alike. So get there, and also now, without further ado, please, please, please introduce yourselves. Um, we'll start with Cassidy. And Ladies then um, we'll go to Dr. Ryan and please introduce yourself, share a little bit about yourself, how you got into where the position you're in now, um, and then we'll get into the nitty gritty details of the chiropractic and content. Cool, cool. Um, well, thanks for having us on. We love following you and following your journey through school, so it's been a lot of fun. Um, I am Cassidy Bones. I am married to this pretty cool guy over here. Um, I started, after I graduated high school, I started in real estate and started as an assistant, worked my way up, um, started a real estate team with my uh, agent at the time and became business partners and worked through that kind of world. And we're doing really cool, we were doing really cool stuff um, when I ran into Ryan Bones. <laughs> and we were kind of like two freight trains, speed trains, what do you call it? Bullet them? trains. Bullet trains, two bullet trains going side by side at ridiculous speeds when we met and eventually started volunteering in the practice. And we're just very synergistic, very um, magnetic mm. and eventually left or a few short months in left uh, real estate and started running this place. Yeah, I really had to convince her to leave what had been her entire career um, but it was the best thing that's ever happened to me or this practice. I can tell you that mm -hmm. uh, because and when we first met, um, she and we started dating. Uh, fun fact is I actually was employing her little sister and <laughs> she came in to kind of put out all the fires that her little sister started. But that's <laughs> probably a story for another time. I am Dr. <laughs> Ryan Bones. It is an honor to be on this fantastic world-class podcast with the one and only Johnny Reuter. Uh, it's an honor to be on second time, two-time guest. Yeah. It should be like hosting SNL, you know, like <laughs> multiple times. The more times you can get on, then you can make like the five-time club or something like that. I like it. Um, so we are in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, which is beautiful. If you don't know where it is, look it up. It's not your grandma's Idaho. This is not potato oh country. Um, we are in the mountains uh, up in northern Idaho on a beautiful lake. And we absolutely love it here. We have Beyond Bones Chiropractic, uh, which is in downtown Coeur d'Alene. That's kind of our area. Kootenai County is in up the, the chimney. We're basically in the chimney. Of, we basically uh, live in Canada. Yeah, we're like an hour <laughs> south of Canada. Uh, but I'm originally from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Did my undergrad in Nebraska. Got my doctorate at Parker University of Chiropractic. Uh, it's, chi it's Parker University now, but Parker College of Chiropractic. Uh, and then... Honestly, found Coeur d'Alene because I thought it looked nice on Apple Maps. Um, three months after graduating, opened up this joint mm -hmm. and then met this wonderful woman about four days after that. So she's been with Thank me. God. She, yeah, she's been with <laughs> me since um, essentially the very beginning of the practice and has been with me and by my side and pulling me along half the time in a good way um, as we've steered this practice around the rocks for three years. Awesome. Almost four. Before Almost years four. in April. Before years hey, in April. Yeah. there we go. Awesome. Almost literally mind-blowing to me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. 
And that's, I think that's a testament, like, and then you're going to come up on that five-year mark, right? That 10-year mark, and, and it's just going to keep going from there, which is amazing. And those milestones are not short feats at all, because what it took you to get there, we're going to talk all about that tonight. And, it, you know, I know for both of you, just speaking with Dr. Ryan previously on the show and just hearing Cassidy speak at summer camp and talking with both of you, it's, it's been a journey. It's been, you've had your challenges, you've had your comebacks though. Right. And that's where, yes. why you're sitting with us today. Right. And that's why you're like, Hey, now I want to give back to students and help other yeah. chiropractic students, you know, be the best they can possibly be. And not to sugarcoat it. Right. Because I think transparency, right. yeah, I think transparency and, and really, being honest and vulnerable with people and saying, Hey, these were our struggles, right? You can learn from that. And then it's like this classic saying, don't reinvent the wheel, but don't reinvent the wheel with, you know, the same information that isn't working. Re don't, right. don't oh reinvent God, the yeah. wheel with working information, right? And applicable things yeah. that people have used, tried, and it's been tested before that you can actually lay down. So um, I'm really excited for this podcast. Like I said at the beginning, please drop questions we will have some sort of answer or opinion for you for that matter. We'll have Probably one or the yeah, lots we'll, of both. <laughs> we'll have one or the other. So um, please ask questions. Um, I, I know Dr. Ryan and Cassidy are more than open to that. So this is going to be a really fun uh, podcast. But to lay the groundwork for where we're going and where you know this conversation is kind of leading and heading. Um, is going to be launching a practice right out of school, right? How do you do that? And Dr. Ryan and I, in our previous, I'll drop a link after this episode and yeah. to our previous uh, podcast because I feel like we're going to refer to it a lot. So I'll drop a link after the pod, after this show um, to that because I think it's really important because he talks all about cash practice, going from insurance to cash, and he also talks about his his um, launching a practice within three months of graduating brain map pretty much and says, hey, these are the things you got to do to be, you know, hyper involved yep. in your community and literally lays it out for you. So I'll drop that after the show's over. And then um, different phases of the first three years of practice. I'm really excited for this one. Um, I, I feel like there are ebbs and flows to life and, and there are definitely ebbs and flows to practice as well. And then how to find and fix mistakes you've uh, made as a new young practice. Why the devil is in the details. Hiring and firing, which I know is probably a podcast in and of itself. And then <laughs> why systems and procedures are crucial. So... Guys, without um, you know getting too hung up on the topics, I just want you guys to you know start us off on a conversation of of your journey to get to where you were. So let's maybe start with that second topic of you know those those three phases um, or those three first years rather in practice and what that looked like for both of you. Oh yeah, well, year one. Year one, <laughs> I feel like was simply survival mode. Year one is taking the punches that you don't see coming because there's so much that you don't know that you don't know. Even when you have worked very hard to prepare, you have mentors, you have coaches, you're following things. You're still inevitably going to get sucker punched by practice multiple times in the face. And that's okay. Anyone who has been through practice will agree with that. Healthy. I know it. It's healthy. It's it's part of it. If you're not being um, sucker punched, you're probably not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, ab absolutely. If you're not, take more risks. Um, so phase one, year one, I would say is rolling with the punches and simply surviving each and every hit and getting back up each and every time you're knocked down to the canvas. What would you say about year one? So many things. Um, I... I agree with that. Year one is also definitely the year of guerrilla marketing and relationship building. Yes. I think um, one of, at least for me on my side, I was not four years ago. I was not super outgoing or like people person-y. I was very behind the scenes, do all the paperwork, all the details, all the the things behind the curtain, if you will. Um, and so the really difficult thing or the most energy sucking thing for me was building relationships, um, with everybody, like literally everybody, but it was really good because I've grown so much out of that personally. So I know a lot of students in the club can relate to that. A lot of students that I've talked to, um, on various campuses or on phone calls have related to that similar, like, Ooh, I'm a little shy thing. Absolutely. That shy moment. 
Because a lot of times when I speak, people are like, yeah, that's great. That worked for you, but I can't do that. Yeah. And like, while I'm an introvert. Yeah. And while I understand that everybody has their own strengths, it's absolutely doable. It's doable if, if you decide that it is doable. Yeah. Um, it will or certainly just go do it. Yeah. It will certainly <laughs> not be comfortable at first. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know what? Truth be told, it wasn't comfortable for me at first either. Uh, getting out and meeting people was something that I develop through school, through conscious effort, through even certain books. Um, How to Win Friends and Influence People is something that I, I harp on constantly. It's not Cassidy's favorite book. She thinks it's like the worst, driest book in the world. But I don't think um, it's the worst book. I just think you should flip to the back, read the bullet points, and get on with your life. <laughs> yeah, you can do that too. Uh, but I truly took that to heart and how I started meeting people. But you're absolutely right. I feel like year one, um, even you know, going back to slightly before opening the doors, is the foundation. It's laying the groundwork for the relational capital that you will cash in in your next few years in yeah. practice. It's not just chucking business cards at people. Mm-hmm. It's actually developing connections with people. Mm-hmm. Even if that doesn't mean that they come into the practice when you open, it may mean that in two years they come in because of the conversation that you had with them two years ago. Um, it's putting bedrock underneath the underneath the practice. Um, a professor of mine, um, Dr. Paterno, when I was in school, who was my clinic professor, once told me like, Ryan, you are going to do awesome things, but if if you don't build a solid foundation first, your skyscraper skyscraper is going to collapse. Um, and I thought that was really cool. You, know, you cannot build skyscrapers on anything but a solid foundation. A practice is the same way. Mm-hmm. You can't build on anything but a solid foundation. Um, you can people can fake stuff only for so long, mm-hmm. but if you are real and you are honest and you are congruent with who you are and you build your foundation on that, uh, it'll lead to a lot of success later in the next future years. Yeah, what and would, the point of building those relationships wasn't just to get new patients. I mean, obviously we need patients coming through the door or we won't exist and we can't help anybody, but to really get a pulse on our community and figure out what our community needs because we are not, he is not the perfect chiropractor for every single spine in our community. Um, You know, some spines don't need chiropractic or shouldn't have chiropractic and some spines only need upper cervical or they only need some other type of chiropractic. So really getting a pulse or they just need a good mechanic. We know some of those too. Um, But getting a pulse for what the people in your community actually need and actually want was huge. What would you say was year two? Mm, I should have, I should have thought about this and like such a blur and you like break it down. Um, I think year two was really the year of expanding our team and hiring and trying new people and helping people find their joy elsewhere, as Dr. <laughs> Amy Spolstra says. I like that. I think year two was a lot of refining. Mm-hmm. You're you're starting to, so you've gotten through survival mode, right? You've taken your punches. Year two comes around and now you're thinking, okay, I'm still here. What works? What isn't working? What do we want to change? Let's reevaluate because if you keep keep doing the same things over and over and over again, you're yes, some of it may be good, but it's not going to be perfect, especially when you're new. Um, and so taking stock and and actually taking an inventory of your practice and mm. where is it good, where is it bad, what do we want to start refining? It's like you you fell out of the boat, you're trying to just keep your head above water. Now that your head's above water, which way do you want to swim? Yeah. And so that was for me year two. Um, we also did a lot of stuff with the team in year two. Yeah. Um, you know, grew to a point where we needed more people. You, you're going to get to a certain cap, a ceiling where you need to expand the team. Um, and we learned a lot of good lessons that way uh, yeah. of what it means to find somebody who's a superstar and mm-hmm. find or how to recognize when somebody's not and not a good fit for you too. Mm -hmm. Um, Anything on that? I think year two, definitely in year three, but like towards the end of year two and into year three was really um, stepping into a new level of coaching and outside perspective and help because you eventually get to this point, right? Where we're going with the swimming analogy, I guess. So you're swimming and things are great and you're feeling really good. But if, things are feeling really good, 
then I tend to suspect that something is at, like something could be better, right? Mm. So the way that we greet new patients could be better. The whole system and procedure could be better. There's always tweaking to do so we yep. can provide the best experience and the best outcomes for our patients. Yep. Um, so the end of year two and beginning of year three was really stepping up our coaching investment and our coaching game. Yeah, I think that's actually a perfect segue for for us, year three was then optimization. There has been. I mean, yeah. we're, we're in it right now. Year three has been optimization. So mm-hmm. we put out the dumpster fires that started in year one. Um, and then we, we looked around and we said, okay, now we're, we're, we're doing good. We're making it. We're making money. We're seeing people. What can we do better? Like you yeah. said, like we, as soon as you get comfortable, that's when you start to have troubles. Um, I've always loved the quote, if you're coasting, you're either slowing down or you're going downhill, one Mm -hmm. of the two. Uh, Amen. And and so we really wanna try to keep our foot on the gas. Um, Mm -hmm. We've really dove in with Dr. Sean Dill and Dr. Lacey Book and Black Diamond Club, and they've been huge. We're doing Mm -hmm. their IPO program, and that's helped us a ton as far as refining more. Mm -hmm. Um, The big thing for year three was going out of all commercial insurance networks going yes. cash for all for all things oh except we're still in medicare for now um that will be a, a phase in the future perhaps but mm-hmm. that was a huge step for us um and taking that really took our practice to where we wanted it to be mm-hmm. um, after simply making it for the first two years um, and that's been the biggest change for us and it's been the the transition from being majority insurance to being all cash and a very, very small portion Medicare has been really interesting, um, but also really awesome because insurance companies do their thing, um, but they aren't doctors and they don't know how to care for patients and they don't know what patients need. And we were finding that while we already wanted to go that direction, we were finding that the insurance companies were getting really strict about like you can only see a patient for two visits and then we have to call and get another pre-authorization or whatever it is or them they were deeming things weren't medically necessary and it's been so much better for our patients Mm -hmm. and so much better for us to be out of network i just i like can't recommend that enough for students and for patients honestly Um, i think it's it's definitely something that you got to look at who is your ideal client who do you want to work with um you know, if you, depending on who you want to work with, insurance might be a, a different game for you. Yeah. And that's okay. I don't think there's a right way to do it or a wrong way to do it. I think there's your way to do it. Uh, and so for finding sure. out what works best for you. Uh, all in all, honestly, over the last three years, I think my biggest takeaway is that there is no one right way to do anything. Um, your practice for you and your practice members and your ideal client and your community is going to respond differently than mine would or Johnny's future practice will or anybody's will. Um, It's when you try to cookie cutter things that you're going to end up burning the cookies. And so... uh, This guy's analogy. (laughs) Fire. I'm loving it. (laughs) Uh, So truly take a look. Yes, if things are tried and true awesome you know start there you might tweak that script just a little bit you might change how you market just a little bit the more you expose yourself to us to sean lacy to other coaching programs to everybody to different chiropractors old and new the more you're going to start to find things that resonate with you and your ideal client and your your community Mm -hmm. that won't with other people Um, and so the more you expose yourself the more you're going to find and so we really highly recommend that you expose yourself as much as possible to as many different techniques and styles and marketing and communication and practice styles and adjustments as possible. Absolutely. I think that was great. I, I, that was amazing. And I, you know, it's funny because a lot of people can't even picture themselves three years down the road from, you know, graduation. (laughs) If I, if you're graduating in, you know, December or when, when I'm graduating in March, right. It's like to picture myself three years down the road. I like to think, you know, all these great things, and it's like, but you guys really put it into a great perspective for for fellow students and peers and recent graduates, um, because it, it really you got to break it down like that, right? What it what am I? What is going to happen year one, right? And and you don't know everything. 
you can't know everything. And yeah. that I loved all all three of these was year one was taking the punches, right? And and getting back up. That's the important part, right? You can take punches all day as long as you get back up. That's what matters, right? Year two, yeah. you guys said hiring and firing. Um, and that's really like or expansion of your team, right? And we're gonna we're gonna tie in all of these different topics. Um, I have a pretty good layout that I jotted down while you guys were talking. And then year three, what is going to be um, coaching and optimization, right? And so expanding, but also now, hey, who can we work with? Like you were just saying there at the end, Dr. Ryan, that is like-minded, that will take us out, pu- keep pushing us out of our comfort zones. Because yes, Cass- exactly. like Cassidy said, Cassidy was like, when you're complacent, right? There's always something that needs to be tweaked, right? It, it's like yes, that complacency, exactly. that complacency can be, can be a, a burden and can exactly. actually be, you know, that, that plateau that you see in practices many, many times. Um, and so it's good to constantly be thinking of these different things and those three different phases when you're coming out. And some people may reach those three different phases three months out of, out of school. Right. Absolutely. Exactly. And some people might reach them 10 years out of school, right? And so you've got to know on that continuum where you're at. And it's okay to be, like you guys both said, it's okay to be yourself um, because it's not one way for every single person. And if when when you start when you start cookie cuttering things, that's when cookies get burnt, right, Ryan? That's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's, that's an original. DM, copyright, whatever. Cool. Um, <laughs> um, I just saw that um, Clint said, and it'll probably change as you and your community grow, be adaptable. And that is I can't even explain how true. We there are so many things that like Ryan dreamed up, I like, this is exactly what my practice is gonna look like, this is exactly who I'm gonna serve, this is exactly what I'm gonna charge and what I'm gonna say and what I'm gonna wear. And our practice today looks quite a bit yep. different than it did yep. on opening day. Yep, absolutely. it looks drastically different. We just repainted, we just yep. got new furniture, we got lots really of stuff. Different. So it looks drastically cool. different actually. <laughs> um, and Tick with Nick also added, you know, know your strengths and weaknesses. Some people may need hire a coach. That year one full disclaimer i i have oh, been yeah. working with sean and following bdc and everything um from back in, all the way into chiropractic school mm-hmm. and so yeah. um yeah the more people you can surround yourself mm-hmm. with i i see so many chiropractors failing because they try to be an island and they oh they they just try to do it themselves mm-hmm. and it's it's death by ego mm-hmm. because they don't want to reach out they don't want to ask anybody they're embarrassed right because of course when you see them at the seminar hey man how's practice oh it's great dude Oh, yeah. killing it, man. Really, oh really taking care of the people. <laughs> Meanwhile, they got a bead of sweat down their neck because they're like negative 200 and they don't know what to do. I don't care if you're that person. Text us, call us, oh, like yeah. email us or somebody. We're open um, books. Because the world needs more successful chiropractors. Yeah. And so if we can help somebody do that or if somebody can help you do that, don't hesitate. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, like you said, to clarify, we've been consulting or coaching in some capacity since day one. Yep. We just really upticked yep. in year three. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. And then um, Michelle, we're not forgetting about you. How to switch to a uh, to a cash practice. We talked all about that. I'll actually link that um video that our first interview that Dr. Ryan and I did on that comment for you, because I don't want you to feel left out. Um, it's all in there. And then also, um, how is working with your spouse? We're going to get to that later in the episode because I want to break down some of this nitty gritty stuff. And then we're going to get into the, the marriage, the relationship, professionalism, how do you set boundaries and all that stuff as well. But I do want to take a quick break because I want to take it early and then we'll have this entire time to talk all about yeah. more stuff. Don't so, go away. The, yeah, what'd you say? Half hours left. So, <laughs> stick around. Awesome. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's easily going to go over an hour. So, you might as well just you know, grab some popcorn, <laughs> grab some water, grab a beer, whatever you got to do. Um, but, yes, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. <laughs> Every chiropractic clinic needs a compliance program. If you are not sure what that includes or why you need one, let Dr. Robin from RHDC Consulting help you build your chiropractic compliance. If you are ready to get started, head to robin halemykajabicom and let Dr. Robin guide you to the end result. Imaging Services' primary business is chiropractic solutions. With over 45 years in the industry of helping chiropractors, Michael Tokash offers free consultations on building your business. 
In the past year, Imaging Services has installed over 100 x-ray machines and digital x-ray systems in over 42 states across the United States. For more, head to theimagingservices.com. The 56-day chiropractic boot camp, building badass female chiropractors who are instinctively successful. Head to 56daychirobootcamp.com slash legendary for your free endless referrals cheat sheet now. Thank you for allowing this brief disruption to take place. And now back to the program. Awesome. So Dr. Ryan and Cassidy just, you know, went and decided to take my word for it and grabbed a couple kept grabbed a couple brewskis. So cheers to you guys. Um, and Ooh. so with that being said, this is going to loosen up the conversation a little bit, you know, <laughs> maybe, maybe mix it, maybe mix this in a couple swear hell. words, you know, just, just really expose things here. This is going to be good. Um, but I was kind of walking, you know, myself and, and Cassidy and Dr. Ryan through, you know, where my mind's at going through all this and how I'm trying to process it. And I want to kind of share that with all of you as well, because I think for all my Cairo students and recent graduates out there, it's important that you, we understand each step that they just explained to us. So year one, they went through this year two, this year three, this, and now they're going on to year four, right? So it's really important that we're able to take a step back and say, Hey, look, can, is that going to me be me, right? Am I going to need some extra assistance? Just like Nick said in the comments, right? You need to know your strengths and weaknesses. Um, so to start, let's go back to year one. Um, we're going to talk because I want to tie that into launching a practice. You launched your practice three months out of graduation. Number one, that's very impressive. But number two is like, you had to know how to do it, right? Where was what was that community outreach looking like? What was the guerrilla marketing look like? What was that relationship building look like? Talk about that just briefly, and then we'll go through year one, year two, and year three again, just with some specific questions that I have for you guys. Sure. Okay. So the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway that I want people to get from the whole guerrilla marketing thing um, is that do it with the intention of, like I said earlier, creating real relationships. Yeah. Okay. Um, you can guerrilla market the heck out of stuff, <laughs> but if you do it very superficially with yeah. each person you meet, you won't have the effect that it's supposed to have. Mm -hmm. Um, it has to be deep, meaningful, memorable connections because what happens then is it's like a virus. Your name spreads to the next person and spreads to the next person. That's how you can create saturation in a market, not just by simply chucking cards that somebody's gonna throw away. So you have to actually make an impact on the people that you meet when you meet them. And so you can do that by definitely knowing who you are, what you do, and how you're going to connect with that person specifically. Mm -hmm. um, so be very clear about what you are and what you do. And then, for example, if you're meeting one-on-ones or something like that, do a little research on influencers oh and actually be able to connect yes. on a deeper level with them. Or if it's somebody you meet on the street, you learn by asking questions. That's You can make more of a memorable impact by actually asking people questions than you will about telling them who you are. So take that away. The biggest thing um, that I think I did maybe a little bit differently was rather than necessarily just working from the ground up, which um, a lot of people do with screenings and educational booths and lunch and learns and things like that. I would call that kind of ground up from the ground floor of, of, of your community up. I did that, but at the same time, I really spent a lot of effort, energy, and focus on working top down. Um, f really trying to connect with influencers in the community key players, business owners, city council members, the mayor, um, fundraisers, nonprofit organizations, people who knew people. Mm -hmm. because And people who knew the community. And people who knew the community. Um, and so by doing that, it was sort of like a sandwich where I was on the top, I was on the bottom, uh, and we saturated all the way through to the middle. Um, and the other thing that I think was like a little bit more gorilla-y was really, really using a story on social media for a period of time. Mm -hmm. 
So if there's a great book, um, Building a Story Brand. I don't know who it's by. I can't that. remember what it's Donald by. Donald Miller, yeah. Um, yeah, Building yep. a Story Brand. Yep. People like to pay attention to a story. They like to follow a story. Why do we watch reality TV, right? Why do we watch news? Because we're, we're captivated by a story. When you're moving in your community and you're working on marketing and making a name for yourself, you have to have be a story, create your story. For me, my story was, hey, I'm, a, I'm brand new. I just moved to town, but I am diving all in for this community because this is where I'm putting my roots down and where I'm going to raise my children. I am starting a business and I want to learn everything there is to know. And I want to know every person there is to know in this town in three months. Watch the journey, follow along as you see my practice get built all the way with it crescendoing at the grand opening, which is basically the climax of the movie where the unlikely hero finally gets to do their thing. Uh, so create a brand. And now along the way, you're putting puzzle pieces in. For example, when I would meet with an influencer, I would make sure that I, you know, maybe I got a selfie with them, or maybe I took a picture of a notebook of notes I took and I would tag them and I would tag their business and the event that they had coming up and the place that we had coffee. Because in doing so, obviously the post would be you know, fairly complimentary, but they would yeah. allow that onto their Facebook page, right? Or their Instagram. Well, now their audience is seeing me. Mm -hmm. You do that with enough influencers and you do that enough times in the community, people are gonna start going, man, I see you everywhere. <laughs> you're that? you're meeting people. You're having lunch with people that I've only known their name and I've lived here for 30 years. How do you know these people? How do you get this connected? Um, I, I, sw I swear, earlier today, weren't you at this event? Like, because I saw you on Facebook. I saw you on Instagram. Like, now you're here? Like, man, you're everywhere. And so creating that momentum through meeting the right people, making connections, and then broadcasting your story very visibly on social media um, and being transparent about that journey, oh because gosh. if it's all wins all the time, it's not nearly as interesting as story. Think about any movie ever. What happens? There's a buildup. There's a huge trauma. Something happens, and then they got to build their way back up and survive, right? Mm -hmm. That's how you create engagement and a captivated audience. Mm -hmm. And so be captivating. Be honest. Be raw. Be real. But be authentic because if you're trying to portray one thing out to the world and you're not actually walking that walk, it's going to kill you uh, both inside and out. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and so that's how you can really leverage what I would, I guess, call guerrilla marketing. Um, the other thing that I think is a key part of that is working local and co-promoting. Oh my gosh. Uh -huh. uh, because Vistaprint will never refer you anybody. So work with a local graphic designer, work as local as you can, because guess what? They're a small business. They want their promotion as much as you do. So when you post about them, they'll post about you. And now you have their audience. And now their audience is engaged because they want the success of their friend or their person. So your success becomes their friend's success. Mm -hmm. And now you have people invested in you being successful because you're investing back into your community. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Cassidy, anything to add to that? What he said. That was really good. <laughs> That's up. I wasn't actually here for that. I mean, I was here, but I was in real estate still for that part. Yeah. Absolutely. I showed up four days after that ended. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't end. Yeah, that's true. It, it actually didn't there's end. There's a good point. It, does, it doesn't end. Right. Okay. So don't look at it as, again, this is based on the real relationships thing, is yeah. it, it doesn't just end. The, the purpose isn't to get people into the practice. The purpose is to become somebody. The purpose is to be a name, to, to build preeminence and cultural authority in your community that you're looked at as the guy. You're the person. Yeah. And, and that's how you do that. That's um, that's what I was referring to earlier when I said, like, you may not be the perfect chiropractor for that person, but there's probably more than one chiropractor in your town and you probably specialize in different techniques and different um, symptoms or different whatever, right? So you need to be the person that they come to to say, hey, I'm having this problem with my car. I need a daycare. I need whatever. Yeah. I need a chiropractor. Who do you know? How can I get help? If you can't help me, who do you know? Yep. Trusted advisor. Yep. That's how you can make a difference. And but actually be worth being that person. Mm, amen. And you have to truly care for people. You, If you yeah. try to do this as a sham, it's going to show up immediately. Yeah. People sniff that out mm -hmm. from a thousand miles away. Um, so you actually have to be invested in the people that you care for as well yeah. and invested in your community for real, not just for selfish reasons. Yeah. yeah. Don't do it for money. Do it mm -hmm. for roots. 
Absolutely. Mm. Root. Absolutely. Root. Hashtag roots. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was always told also that uh, to add to this, right, that, that if as chiropractors, right, we, we always we want new patients. We want more people in our office. We want all this stuff. But it's like that doesn't come at the expense of just handing your business card to someone or taking advantage of that relationship and saying, come in my office. No, no, this is I was always told you give you give and you give right before you receive anything. And that that's yeah. so important because if you offer don't sit at the business commerce meeting and sit there and go, oh, man, all of these people are potential patients. No, no, no. it's the conversation is. All of these people, how can I be of assistance to all of these people, not mm-hmm. through chiropractic care? How right. can I, how, how can, can I serve? better, That's exactly, said. exactly. Mm-hmm. How can I better serve I these people, right? How can I, how can I help you grow your business? Because I know you're doing whatever you're doing yep. and I want to help you, right? And that's what it's about. That's that. And I think that goes with everything that you just said is like all of yeah. the, local promotions and everything like that, getting with the influencers. And um, we did a great podcast also with Dr. Elise Rigney. And she yeah. talked all about all about mi- micro markets and like getting with those influencers and having profound impacts in your community um, because of that reason. But because you care, not because you're like, oh, I know the strategies behind, you know, right. getting in with influencers. No, it's like you care about this and you, you are growing yourself through helping others. And that's that's what's most important. Zig Ziglar has an excellent quote. You can get everything you want in life by helping enough other people get what they want. Yeah, absolutely. Good absolutely. Good job, Zig. Good job. Good job, Zig. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Dr. Uh, Dr. Ryan and Cassie, we got a question from uh, Sarah Zwink. How does diving deep into community work in a larger city? And hmm. I, I, I would like you guys to take the answer. I also would like to answer that as well. Go hmm. ahead. Absolutely. I would say number one is all cities, big cities are it, at, in at least in a portion, fairly segmented into smaller areas or communities, right? Mm-hmm. People take pride in their borough of New York or people take pride in their suburb or whatever it may be. So that's where you would start. And I would heavily focus there first. Uh, but then outside of that, the influencer thing still pertains. I mean, you still have city councilmen, you still have mayors, you still have a big business owners, you still have social media influencers. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you can still leverage that as well. Um, and there's also still organizations that you can support. You don't have to be in, in everything, but yeah. you take you know a cause, a two, three really good causes that are local, that have high impact um, and dive into those and help give back to those. Ideally, if you're really smart, doing that where your ideal client is spending time or, or has eyeballs, um, because if they can see you doing it, then that's you know, all the better. Or if, even better, if they're there asi- alongside you doing it, mm-hmm. giving back to that community as well. That's who you're really looking to connect with. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. I agree with that. I'd love to hear your take on that, Johnny. Yeah. No, no. Actually, Dr. Ryan said everything I was going to say. So <laughs> I, it's like there are there are smaller pockets, though, right? And there are there are many cities and there are many communities within that larger city. And if you really hone in and care for those in that local neighborhood. Cause I know like going back to the Chicagoland area, that's going to be the, the neighborhoods in the Chicagoland area are very yeah. tight. And there it's right. like, this is my neighborhood. This is what represents me, right? This is, this is what I, where I tell people I'm from kind of thing. So it's yeah. like that to me is kind of the same idea that Dr. Ryan just mentioned. It's the same, it's little cities or little communities within the grand scheme of, you know, Chicago, New York, whatever city you're talking about. Um, so yeah, that, that you, you nailed it. Um, let's go into year two. Year two, we, you guys were talking about expanding the team. I'm going to tie in the topic of hiring and firing. How do we do this as a two-year-old doctor of chiropractic? Let me start with how not to do it. <laughs> yeah, because, we know really how not to. Because I'm really good at that. Um When I first started, I didn't have a clue. Um, I had some advice from some mentors, but it was very surface level, and I didn't take the time to dive in deeper with that. Like many people graduating chiropractic school, I I had never hired anybody, (laughs) Um, and so I didn't even know where to start. My first 
interview, I got recommendations from people in, in town for the type of personality I was looking for. Um, I took and the personality was spot on. The personality was good, um, but I, for example, didn't have any sort of system to test if they had, uh, you know, good working skills, office skills, for example. Mm -hmm. um, what we were looking for for skill sets and systems in a practice and mm -hmm. how they were going to do that, um, and that was my fault. The other thing that I did, so I ended up hiring um, two young ladies right away when I started, and. The other thing that I didn't do is I did not train them for worth a crap. Like and, none. And so with with my, I will happily fall on this grenade because I don't think in it at all it was the personalities of the people that I hired as much as it was the terrible lack of interview, the terrible lack of um, systems, the terrible lack mm -hmm. of teaching, of coaching, of showing them how it's done and then mm -hmm. you know watching me do it, then me watching them do it. There was none of that. It was, here you go, do this thing. Like, you can figure it out, you got this. And that blew up in my face. Um, one quit very soon after because I put her in a horrible place where she yeah. didn't know what the hell she was doing and people were being upset. I was upset, of course, because she didn't know what she was doing. Um, <laughs> The other one stuck it out a lot longer, much to her credit, uh, who is Cassidy's little sister, who I deeply appreciate. I think she's watching live, actually. I think she is, actually. So hi. Hi, Ashley. Hi. Um, <laughs> and if it was not for her, Cassidy and I would have never met. She totally played matchmaker and hooked mm -hmm. us up. Um, and in doing so, I learned how to not run a team. Yeah. Um, and eventually she moved away. Cassidy came in because of Ryan, actually, she moved no, all the way to she Rhode did Island. Not. Um, <laughs> but Cassidy came in then and started turning over the rocks of this rubble pile that I'd kind of thrown together <laughs> in my first few months of practice. Yeah. Uh, and in doing so, I think she can tell you a lot more of what she found and where we went from there. Yeah. Um, I full disclaimer. We have never actually hired somebody with a shitty attitude. Everybody's had like wonderful personalities and been so good with people. Um, they've just not all been good with systems and procedures. And like he said, he didn't, there was no systems and procedures documented. So it, right. it kind of goes with that, that old saying, you don't know what you don't know, right? Mm -hmm. So he didn't know what the steps were to enter a new patient into his EHR. He didn't know how to bill insurance or how to check insurance or um, like the, the for instance, they were never trained on preauthorizations. And so they had no idea what the phrase preauthorization met, meant. So they just weren't getting them. Yeah. Like they weren't calling anybody. And for anybody who knows what that means, it was really crappy. Yeah. Um, for people who don't know what that means, if your insurance company requires a pre-authorization and you don't get a pre-authorization, there is no coverage. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. Um, so there was there was so, a lot of money I, we didn't make in year one because yeah. of mistakes in lack of training. Um, getting punched in the face. Yep, you know? get, like I said, getting punched in the face. But that's okay. Yep. Um, uh, we have since developed a lot better screening and hiring and training process, mm -hmm. which is much more multi-step. Um, like I said, when we first started, I just took some recommendations, went to coffee literally and was like, here's my vision. Does that sound good? And they're like, yeah, that sounds great. And I was like, wonderful. You're hired. Which is important for the record. <laughs> the people that you hire have to buy into your vision. They yeah, have but that's to want all to I had um, was vision. And that was about it. And, Vision's good. and so now um, we have a much better multi-stage process where we collect resumes right? We use social media a lot for our resume collection, actually. We, no, that's not true. We do not collect resumes. I, I don't read resumes. Resumes are bullshit and lies. Okay. We have an application. Um, so we have like a very specific well, ad. Yeah, Ryan doesn't hire people. <laughs> um, we have a very specific ad that we put out that is like, it's super descriptive. I'll post, um, I'm making a note, I'll post in the comments our assistant ad. And it's very specific. It describes like a, like when you read it, you know exactly who we're looking for. Um, we put out a referral gift card in there. So if we mm -hmm. hire somebody that you refer to the job, we'll give you a hundred dollar visa gift card or a hundred dollars cash. And it, we have very specific obnoxious steps. Uh, and if you don't follow those steps to a T, I don't even reply to your ad or like yeah. to your um, application response. 
if you fill all that out correctly and you send me this wonderful thing that I'm interested in pursuing, then I will send you an application and you can fill it out. Yeah. And then from there we go to, and then I'll read your application, Yep, which it's... is also probably full of lies. We, we screen <laughs> from there. And so we narrow it down and then we go to phone interviews. And then from there, then we go to in-person interviews and mm -hmm. then we do working interviews. Um, which is basically being here, seeing it in action, mm -hmm. understanding that this is what you're going to do. Um, and having that process and that system has helped a ton to get the right person. Um, this again, We learned a lot from Sean and Lacey on this in hiring a superstar, um, even to the point of pushing the person back and telling them, hey, we don't think you're right for this job. The right person is going to say, no, I am right for this job. Yeah, they're going to be offended. Like, yeah, how like, dare you? I, I know I can do this. I am the right person. Yeah. Um, and so there's a lot of little, little things that we've learned over the years, but it's certainly not the way I did it. Yeah. And it's not actually, we don't do it the way that Sean and Lacey do it either. They have a very, very specific, very intense how to hire a superstar system. Um, we've just kind of pulled and mushed from things that I really liked and found a lot of success with in real estate, things that Ryan's previous mentors have found a lot of success with yeah. and gone from there. Yeah. So I, I think the other part of this, like you said, is the firing part. Um, so wait, do you have any questions? Do you have any comments on the hiring before I get to firing? No, I, I think it's just really important to understand that it, it's okay to have a multi-tiered hiring process. And I think oh, a lot of people, especially coming right out of school, we're like, boom, we need to, you know, if we are, you know, busy or whatever, we need help in the office right away. It's like, okay, I'm going to post, a, you know, a status on Facebook and whoever's oh interested, gosh. I'll just message and, you know, talk to them and yeah. hopefully we're friends. And then it's like, I think that's where a lot of people fall into though, but it's good to hear that like, it's okay to set up some structure before you're even like hiring your first CA or hiring your first technician yeah. or whatever. Um, I think it's probably really important. And I like that you have kind of a gateway procedure as well. It's like, yeah. hey, follow these instructions <laughs> pretty much. And uh -huh. then we'll actually read your resume, your application, your CV, right. whatever right. you want to call it. Because then you've made it past that initial step of saying, you know, I'm actually interested and I care enough to do this correctly that exactly. I want to make it to that next round or level or whatever you want to call it. I think that's really, I think that's really cool. Yeah. Some of the best hiring advice I ever received was from Dr. Lacey book. Um, and it's two parted. So first part is hire before you're ready because yep. it's going to take time. Right. So if you wait and we've done this before, like we've waited until the absolute last second and we're like, drowning and sweating and crying and we need so much help and then we're hiring out of desperation right. which is like the worst thing that you can yep. do um and the other really awesome piece of advice that she gave me was um you need to have three months of somebody's salary set aside to essentially just throw away because they're not going to the point in, the point in business is to get a return on your investment right mm -hmm. And your employees and your team, they're an investment. They're not an expense. Mm -hmm. And they're going to spend the next 90 days digging into your culture and learning and making mistakes and probably costing some money, like literally costing the money, costing some money in mistakes. And you need to be prepared to just like, what? Okay, that, that three months of money is gone. But at the end of three months, they should be great. Right. Like, they should be totally trained and ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. And it won't put you in as bad a compromising position if it doesn't work mm -hmm. out. And you won't be either. so anxious about their success. You won't be thrusting them into things that they're not ready for yeah. or like forcing a square peg into a round hole. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or holding on to them when you should be letting yeah. them go just because, oh man, I'm now I've made the investment in them. And right. you know, I, I think they're going to work. I, I swear next yeah. week they're going to come back and they're, yeah. they're going to have a totally different attitude and all this stuff. So yeah, um, yeah that has been really, really excellent advice mm -hmm. for us. Yeah. So go into go into firing now. Okay. Do you want to tell them how not to do it in one I sentence? Will get in one sentence. I will again tell you how not to do it. <laughs> um, again, I had never hired anybody. I had also never fired anybody. Um, and so my first firing was so overly kind. It involved <laughs> gift baskets. <laughs> And, a very elaborate gift and, basket. And gift you. cards and a going away card and all of this stuff. And <laughs> and nice. it, it was so indirect. And honestly, I will just say, like, 
I was such a wussy about it that she said like, okay, well, wow, this is all great. Like, I'll see you Monday then. <laughs> and it's like, no, I, I'm sorry. Like, we no uh, longer need you. And and it was it was so bad she didn't even know she was fired. Like, that's that's when it's bad. Um, and so since then, we have truly gotten better at it after i don't know i think we've now fired several several um people more than we'd like but (laughs) inevitably that's what happens times change people change um i also like to say that people fire themselves um oh yeah they totally because typically if you follow the right protocol around that they've had a chance to improve um so i actually came up with oh let's see if i can find it I want to hear your advice on firing first, and then I have actually I've narrowed it down to I think twelve rules. Ryan's twelve rules of, of Gosh, firing. That's so many rules. <laughs> that's an excessive amount. Of no, rules. it's perfect. It's wonderful. Um, Ryan is actually considerably better at firing people than I am. I do not like it. It's so uncomfortable for me, um, and that's I mean something I should practice, but I don't really want to practice firing people. You know, that's not good. Um, <laughs> We'll just, we'll hear Oh, here we go. Okay. So, yes, I now have basically kind of taken on this role if and when it comes to that. So I have, here are my my tips for firing. Are you ready? I'm ready. ready. All right, here we go. All right, so first off, everyone's heard the age-old adage, slow to hire, quick to fire. Yes, that is true. Take your time hiring someone, but if someone's not the right fit, you got to make that decision and they got to go. Um, Few things can tank a practice as fast as a bad team member, honestly. That is super Um, true. And understand that by keeping someone who is not a good fit, you're not only hurting yourself, but you're hurting them too Mm -hmm. because they're not realizing their highest potential by being stuck in your practice, right? Um, So if someone's doing more detriment to the vision of the practice than they are the good, they have to go, period. All right. Now, tips. Here you go. Number one, make sure it's them and not you. Ooh, that's a good one. Actually, this is a really, really good one. Let's elaborate. (laughs) Um, So we have had to take a step back and come to the realization that sometimes you're really frustrated with a team member or an employee because they don't know how to do something right or they have a poor attitude or something. But... If you actually sit back and dissect it, you have either changed something and not told them about it, which I've definitely done before, like had a conversation in my head, whoop, that was it. Like all of a sudden they were supposed to know what to do. Or you didn't train them. Yeah, you didn't train them properly. Um, You are not following through on something. You're not engaging with them the way that they need. You're not supporting them the way that they need. Making sure that it is them and it is their problem and you're giving them everything that they need to succeed is like 100 percent the most important thing i think it's a perfect segue to number two (laughs) give them the opportunity to improve or leave first uh if somebody if you're having an issue with somebody that should be clearly stated Mm -hmm. this is the problem you've been late five times if you're late another time we have to let you go great two times But, but now they know and if they are late again you've given them the opportunity. And so it's not just willy nilly, right? It's mm-hmm. not like so many people I've seen, um, and I think we've even done it where we haven't even given the person a chance to improve. It just wasn't working. And so bam, they're gone. Mm-hmm. Listen, there, there's situations, yep. There's situations for that too, but giving people a chance to improve, or they might just say, you know what? This is not a good fit. Yeah. You know, I'm going to recuse, recuse, recuse myself from this. Recuse, recuse it. it. All right. Number three, protect your business document everything oh my gosh including the times that you have given them opportunity to improve right Mm -hmm. that's like the thing that i've failed at the most over the last few years is like i'll have a conversation like a coaching conversation with a team member and never document it i'm like well we've had this conversation six times but i have absolutely no proof right exactly and for example there's a reason that if you work in corporate america you get written up for things being written up means that the company documented what the thing was so that if it ever comes back on them, they have proof of everything that had ever happened as far as altercation. A lot of small businesses, a lot of chiropractors don't do that very well because they, you know, it's, a, it's more personal. They don't want to write somebody up. No, protect yourself, protect your business. Anytime that you have an issue with an employee or there's something, document that because it will protect you come later. And it makes it really clear for them, too. Like, it's not wishy-washy. Right. It's just, like, black and white, this is what's going on. Yep. 
it's not personal, it's just business. We're both going to sign this and agree to this. We're both going to agree to the timeline in which this needs to be corrected, and then they're going to correct it. Exactly, because then there's no question about it. Mm-hmm. Um, number four, get everything in order beforehand. Know what they need to do, what they need to sign, what they need to give back. Um, for example, do they have keys to the practice? Do they have all the passwords to every computer in the practice? Do you know all the passwords? Is that is that somewhere? Oh, my God. Your team member shouldn't be the only one that knows all the stuff for the practice. You're going to end up in a really bad position, right? There's um, apps for that, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yep, LastPass. Um, do they have uh, you know, files? Do they have anything that you need to get? Have documents ready. For example, hey, these are the things we've talked about. This is why we're letting you go. Do you agree to that? Do you not agree to that? If you don't, we write your statement here and then sign at the bottom. But you're still fired. But you're still fired, right, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, and then final pay. Have final pay ready for them. Yeah, and that's that's actually a really big one, and that varies. Ooh, I don't remember if it varies state by state, but you should definitely, before you hire somebody ever, you should check with your state law and federal law so you know, like, if I fire somebody right now, do I have to give them their final pay? Do I have, like, can it wait until their next technical payroll? There are really strict yeah. timelines for this thing. These things that have to be followed. Mm-hmm. Yep. Number five, choose the proper time and place. Um, mid shift with a bunch of patients, not a good time. Right before a shift, also really not a good time. Um, it all, but also you can't wait. I'll do it in two months. You know, come right. after Christmas. No, that's not good either. Like find the right time and the right place and do it. Um, don't rush into the meeting. I've done that. Like coming out of patients and I and then my, I'm all flabbergasted and and I don't have my shit together and so now I'm saying things I shouldn't say. Nope. Have your have your stuff together and don't rush into it. Focus on the facts and the laws. Mm-hmm. Know why you can let somebody go, why you can't let somebody go. Um, and also be, again, black and white. This is why we're letting you go. Not like, oh, well, really it was because you wear that ugly crop top every single day and we've talked to you about it. But I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say it's uh, it's it's a, it's a personnel issue or you have a bad attitude or whatever it may be. Yeah. Don't make stuff up. Let's be honest. Stick to the facts. Mm-hmm. Um, don't vote alone. Especially oh like never fire somebody by yourself yeah, ever. Like male or female, um, you know, even if you can have someone else in the room, if it's a, yes. I, I'm some, I know there's solo practitioners out there, so that can be more difficult. Um, if you have cameras up in your practice, do it somewhere where you're on camera, just so your butt is covered in yeah. case they decide to make up a story about it. Right? Um, it shouldn't be a surprise. This is a big one too. Um, if somebody is going to get fired, they should go into that meeting going, I'm going to get fired. Like they already gave me the chance. They said, out, if this happened again, it didn't happen. It happened again. Here I am. I'm going to get fired. Period. That's what it should be. Um, be consistent. If you fire somebody for something, you can't let that go on somebody else. Or if you let something go on somebody, you can't fire somebody else for that. Right. So be consistent about what you do. Keep it short. Unlike this list. Yeah. Don't make up <laughs> excuses. Um, keep it private and have someone escort them out. So that way they're not picking up a you know file or something like that. Again, this is all crazy, wacky stuff until it's not, until it happens. Right. And, and people know this it happens. This has never happened to us, by the yeah, way. No thankfully. one's taking a file out of yeah, this office, no, but it's, ever. This is just, again, Man. Bonesy's tips for firing. Um, <laughs> at the end of the day, leadership is in practice means doing what is best for the practice, and sometimes that means getting rid of somebody. Don't get wrapped up in the emotions. You need to do what is best for your practice, period. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Something really wonderful that Shondell um, preaches, and I think it's absolute gold, is who got you here, like who and what got you here may not get you where you're going. Mm. And that's okay. Yep. That's totally fine. There are people who are going to get you to 50 people a week, to 100 people a week. There are people who are going to get you through the first 10 years of practice maybe, and then I mean, maybe that's how long it was supposed to be. Maybe that's your, your relationship has run its course professionally. And that's okay. Yep. There is no shame in that for yeah. either of you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we do have a question. When you document something that the person did or yeah, did, do you have the employee sign it as well? Yes. Okay. Um, so we have, I have a Google document. I think Kelly is watching this, so maybe this will be a surprise to her. Um, I have a Google document that I keep because it's all time stamped and dated. Mm. Um, that has like a running narrative of any coaching conversation we've ever had or something like that. But I also have a separate form that has like 
my statement, their statement, and what we're going to do to rectify the situation. Yeah, absolutely. And you just mentioned, you know, Sean Dill and, and their coaching and a little bit about like their advice to you. And you guys have kind of sprinkled that in throughout this whole entire podcast, which is great. Um, so I, I do want to encourage people, if you're watching this, if you, you know, if you've heard this term coach or mentor and you're a chiropractic student, you're really early on in your career, um, or you're a recent grad and you've never had the experience of being coached or being mentored by somebody, please, I mean, reach out to any, all three of us. I mean, any of us, but also there are tons of amazing people out there. And if you ever have any questions about like, Hey, you know, is this person authentic? Is this, you know, is this, do you think this would be a right fit for me? Like, you're not going to really find out until you start talking with them and knowing who they are and where they're coming from. Um, but also I highly encourage that you do it at least try it because you could have a really great experience or you could have a really bad experience, but a lot of times it's a really great experience and it gets you like Cassidy was saying to that next level, right? And you're going to have people in your life that take you to that next level, no matter if it's a family, a friend, or if that's a coach or a mentor, that person, whatever they say or the way they say it, because you can hear it a thousand times from your best friends. Yes. You've got to do this. 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 And then all of a sudden, someone on stage or someone a little bit more important than your best friend says, you know, you should try it this way. And you're like, and you're, you know, yeah. your whole world <laughs> shatters and explodes. And you're like, oh, you're a genius. You know, like, this is why they pay you so much. It's like, no, they, they said the same thing, you know, your best friend said. But it's the, it's the context, it's where you're at, it's the environment, it's all of that stuff that plays a role in that. Um, but I highly, highly, highly encourage you to find yourself a mentor, a coach, someone to guide you because they point out what you don't see in yourself. And it's really interesting because they, you know, a lot of people like to say coaches and mentors, you know, they just apply certain principles and skill sets to a mass amount, a broad amount of people and a vague amount of people. And it's like, there's some truth to that, but also at the same time, if those things that they're saying in the way that they're saying them are turning on light bulbs for you and other people, right. that's so, you know, that's the point of it. That's the, you know, they're there to guide you along this journey and to really, like I wrote, literally someone else points it out for you. What you didn't see before that was probably right in front of you. They're just like, Hey, I think you should probably try this or, you know, uh -huh. this would be a better way of, of doing that. Um, so talk to us a little bit about that, but then last but not least, like I want to get into a uh, relationship and working with your spouse. So talk to us a little bit about coaching and your experience so far. Uh, I have loved the opinion that if a coach always agrees with you, get a new coach. Oh my gosh. They are not there to be your best friend. They're yep. not there to be your best friend. They are there to challenge you, to push you, to grow you, to call you on your bullshit. Yep. Uh, that's an important aspect of it. And if it's not working and it's not working for you, then get in, honestly, just get a new coach. Like there are so many different people out there who have great experience, who share that experience with others. Find the one that works best for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's great. I, I think I think it's just important to cover because that was kind of your year three was coaching optimization. And yeah. I just like all of, it was sprinkled in, but I just wanted to say, hey, you know, there there's opportunities out there for you guys to really get some some great mentorship and help, especially recent grads going into practice. Um, and then last but not least, I want to talk about this. This is going to be a lot of fun. Um, but before we talk about it, I want to thank our last sponsors. And then we're going to talk about marriage, relationships, and being in a professional environment with one another. So stick around for that. It's going to be a, it's going to be a ton of fun. <laughs> Dr. Stu Hoffman, founder and president of ChiroSecure Malpractice Insurance, is the foremost expert in both risk management and risk avoidance. Understanding the everyday challenges of today's practicing chiropractor and the current public perception of chiropractic has made ChiroSecure the fastest growing malpractice insurance program of the last 28 years. Find out more at ChiroSecure.com. The IFCO is here to support you. Whether you are a chiropractic student, doctor of chiropractic, chiropractic organization, or member of the public, the International Federation of Chiropractors and Organizations is here for you. They recognize and support your right to practice and receive 
vertebral subluxation centered chiropractic care and are here to ensure that right and spread access to that care throughout the world. Head to ifcochiro.org slash legendary for more. Be sure to give our friends over at Cairo Hustle a listen. They are bringing together some of the biggest names in the profession and learning from the greats. Cairo Hustle creates a safe space where chiropractic leaders share their stories and their passions with the world. Let's get hustling by heading to CairoHustle.com now. Thank you for allowing this brief disruption to take place. And now back to the program. Such interesting, different things to say, yeah, depending yes. on how the week's been. Yes, we do. All right, let's do it then. Here we are. We are back. Thank you for sticking around with us. This is the Legendary Chiropractor Podcast, if you're just hopping on. Or if you have watched the rest of it and, you know, went and grabbed a beer or a glass of wine just to hang out with us some more, um, welcome back. So, Doc and Cassidy, please talk to us about, you know professionalism, professional boundaries, and being in a relationship and marriage while being and running a very successful business. Go ahead. Start. You can start from the very beginning or you can start from all the time, where there's you just are. Not, yep. There's not a single issue ever. That's it. That's done. Podcast over. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You first. Ladies first. I would, I would love to hear you get to go first and then I'm um, and then I will agree with everything. I should you have said. done this. I should have set this up like one of those game shows where it's like, at, what is their oh, favorite? Yeah, what on. is their favorite thing about you? Like, all that. <laughs> like, like the, the newlywed so game. Oh, <laughs> we have to do that eventually. That'd be so fun with like a couple different chiropractic couples. Oh my gosh. Uh, um, working with my husband is really interesting. It's like interesting in a very good way. Um, well, okay, I'll start at the beginning. So year one was really like enchanting and endearing and I was working full time in real estate. So I had my own thing. Um, and then I would come after work or before work or whatever. And I was basically volunteering full time in the office. And so it was this very heroic feeling, like very sexy, glamorous thing. Uh, four years later, it's not always so sexy Mm -hmm. and so glamorous especially, you know, like what, what our business was four years ago and what it is today is two different worlds. They're drastically different experiences and they need, those are like almost two entirely different businesses. The things that we need to do every day now. Um, and it has been special. It has been special. It's been special because we've gone from, we met four days after around open practice. Right. So in the last four years, we um, have changed careers. Well, mm-hmm. I've changed careers. Um, we dated and built a relationship. Yep. Got that engaged. started in April, December yep. of that year. I left real estate on New Year's Eve. Yep. And started 20, was it 2017? Started 2017, 2017. full time in the practice. Um, in no, that time, I practiced just, more than tripled. As just my girlfriend, too. Yeah, as by just the way. his girlfriend. Like, which is a huge leap of faith. It was insane. Um, yeah, it's a little bit insane, but <laughs> it was kind of, it was with the understanding that there was a future to be made. Um, and so, yeah, she did that, which, yes, the, the practice took off um, as soon as she came in here full time and dedicated her incredible skill set mm-hmm. and focus and energy because her skills are drastically different and complementary to my skills. My skills are very outward. They're very people-y oriented, marketingly oriented. Hers are very fantastic at internal stuff, all the systems, the procedures, the spreadsheets, AR, billing, um, everything that I hated, (laughs) which was why it worked so well for us and works so well for us um, is because our our skill sets are extremely complementary. Mm -hmm. We've also found that it's kind of been crucial to maintain our sanity and relationship as we've gotten into the years here is because it gives us our own lanes. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. His thing is his thing. My thing is my thing. Yep. We have very separate and distinct roles and responsibilities. Um, and it has not always been that way. There was a, yeah. like a pretty rough quarter in our relationship where we were just both stepping on each other's toes and 
I'm doing something that I, that Ryan thought he was doing. So then we're like double doing work and we're both frustrated and tired and Mm -hmm. running a business. And I mean, caring for people in any capacity, whether you're physically caring for them and adjusting them and checking them, or whether you're like emotionally caring for them at the front desk, that's a lot. lot. Working in a chiropractic office is especially one that's so dedicated and interested in people's lives and their relationships and yeah. their well-being, um, inside and outside of the practice is exhausting sometimes. It and so is. that level of exhaustion plus running a business and not having defined roles and responsibilities was a little bit of a disaster. Yeah, it was, it it was a rough was, three months. It was, it was a mess. Um, and thankfully we were able to sort that out more clearly define whose thing is what and mm-hmm. give that person, honestly, and what I think a big part of it was, was, each other giving the other person the trust that they would take care of their thing. Um, I can tell you there's nothing that triggers Cassidy more than when I look over her shoulder or doubt or double check something that is her responsibility to do. Um, And vice versa, you know, she doesn't really do it very much, but if she doubts me on uh, something clinical or a patient case or something like that, I kind of get that like, what the, Excuse what, me. <laughs> look, um, but vice versa, if I doubt her about team or payroll or something like that, I'm way out of my, I'm way out of my element. Mm-hmm. Um, and so having that mutual respect for each other's capabilities in their role is very important. Mm-hmm. Um, and, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, just being equally yoked in that oh aspect. That's like my <laughs> least favorite term in the entire world. <laughs> Um, doesn't have anything to do with eggs. Look it up. It doesn't, which I actually learned um, <laughs> just a couple months ago. Um, I think, oh, I lost my thought. Oh, gosh. That's what happens, <laughs> that's what happens when, when we're yoking. Yeah. yeah the yolks just being scramble each it what? all up up there. Um, being each other's accountability partner also. So I have an accountability group outside of Ryan, but within our practice and within, like we have these very specific roles and responsibilities set. And when he was saying that we trust each other to make good decisions and sound decisions that push our practice forward and are good for our patients in each of those roles, it doesn't mean that we don't ever like question each other or suggest other things. It just means that if we have a conversation about it, his word is final for all things clinic. And that's just how it has to be. And if there's something that we're really struggling with and we can't find a clear answer to, we call our coach. I mean, that's why we pay them. Mm -hmm. Yep. And vice versa. Right. Likewise. Um, And something that I think is important in this roles conversation is understanding that as doctor and, you know, and wife or, or doctor and husband, whatever it may be, you're not just working in the practice. If you're a chiropractor, you very likely, um, you know, you're either associating your, or you own your practice, whatever it may be, you can't just work in your practice. You have to work on your practice. Mm-hmm. And that was something that um, we get hung up with sometimes because I, a lot of times I'll just kind of defer to her um, because I think like, I, you know, I do the adjustments, like you take care of everything else, but I'm not, you know, just the doctor, I'm CEO. And she's not just practice manager, she's COO. Um, and so we Which have- difficult sometimes. Right. We have to, you have to take time to work on your practice mm-hmm. um, and work on your relationships within the practice. Mm-hmm. Um, that was something that we just did. We had a, a good friend of ours, Dr. Christopher Collins, come out Collins. here about a month and a half ago, a month ago. Um, and what we, one of the things that we worked on is we clearly defined roles for not just practice manager and doctor and CA and front desk, but COO and CEO and what reports does mm-hmm. do people run, but also how do those work together? How do those people work together? Because granted, while we're multiple roles at this point, we may not be in two years or five years or, or 10 six years, months. right? Or six months. We might be different roles. And so understanding how those work together is important. Mm-hmm. Um, and understanding how we work together is a really important thing. So investing the time to learn about your significant other, or you know, even your practice manager, or your front desk, and learning how they communicate, mm-hmm. um, how they want to be asked to do things. For mm-hmm. example, um, Cassidy hates it when you come into her office and ask her something midday, because she's working on something. She has a 
a set task that she's doing, if I come in and interrupt, um, then I'm screwing off her train of thought. If I instead like just even jump on my phone outside of her window and send her an email, then she'll get it and she'll prioritize it and she'll take care of it. Um, don't test, don't touch anything on Cassidy's desk that is ever. True. Not one thing, and don't put anything on her desk. Um, but you know, I'm different. If you want something, just come ask me. I'd rather just answer it and be done with it right away. So just learning how you each work. It's like you know, you have love languages. Absolutely, that's great for a relationship and knowing love languages. But knowing work languages is really, really important mm -hmm. for a couple in practice together too. And for for a team. And for a team, absolutely, that, like, not just a couple. You're in relationship with every single person on your team and every single person in your practice. So while I am a very, like, I like to communicate very black and white and very directly. If I communicate with Ryan like that and with a couple of our other team members previously, if I communicated with them in a very direct way, they were, I mean, like shattered. They thought that I hated them and I was just trying to be an efficient communicator. So shattered is a strong one. <laughs> I've never was, been shattered. Okay, okay. Sorry, Ryan wasn't shattered. There was a human being who uh, I did make cry because I communicated too directly for yeah. too many months, and it was yeah. it was rough. I'm I'm a I'm a much more finesse, tactful yes uh, leader communicator in the practice, and Casty's very direct. Um, what is what is clear is kind. Cu clear is kind. She said, which is good. Clear up. is kind <laughs> and not beating around the bush. Um, I just like to add a little bit of sugar to some things. You can put a smiley face on there. Um, and so, but understanding <laughs> understanding that communication is key. Yeah. And I, I will say this: if you're working together with your spouse, like in chiropractic, I honestly, you can tell people that you don't talk about business like outside of the practice. At least you for lying. us, that's bullshit. <laughs> you are absolutely talking about business outside of the practice. You are you just can't help it. Like you're at dinner and you're talking about oh relationships and then a funny story from the day will come up or, oh my gosh, by the way, like, guess what? We have the opportunity to do this. Mm -hmm. Like it's part of being an entrepreneur. You you don't clock in and clock out. You live the life. Yeah. And so if you can, if you have a partner who's also shares in that entrepreneurial mindset and spirit. You want to talk about business yeah. when you're at dinner because you're getting excited. You're having you're ideas. You yeah. you want to grow and build this thing together because practice, at the end of the day, is a business, man. You got to keep the lights on. You got to pay your team. You got to pay rent. You got to do whatever you need to do. Um, and so having an entrepreneurial mind and having a partner with that is huge. So don't think like, oh, I can never talk about business outside of the practice. This voice. I have no you're, voices. You're going to do it. So don't beat yourself up about it. Now, I would say have maybe some safe zones. Oh yeah. Like, like, uh, mm -hmm. bed is one thing for us. Like we try to not talk about practice. We still inevitably end up do sometimes, yeah. but you can throw the flag and you could say, Hey, I don't want to talk about this right now. Like let's go sleep or date night, trying to carve out that time and be very intentional and very specific about working on your own relationship. Cassidy put me in my place hard one time when I, I wanted to use date day to do a project in the office. So right. <laughs> And, so <laughs> and she said, and I will never forget this. Our relationship is a project too. And if you don't pay attention to it, it's going to fail. And I was like, oof. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Absolutely. I'm yeah. sorry. And so definitely scheduling time and being intentional about time to work on your own relationship, not just the practice. I yeah. love it. Yeah. Everything think, you guys said, go ahead. Um, I think for me, the most... It really has been a really interesting, very wild ride. Um, but a few things that are super important to me, we do not pretend like we're not married at work. Mm. Our patients know that we're married. For sure. Like Ryan will come out and give me a kiss on my forehead in the middle of the day, or we'll like give each other a hug or talk about dinner plans for a minute or something. We are human beings. We own this yeah. practice together. We're married. And I think that it's really beautiful. And a lot of our patients really like yes. that we're actual human beings and not love robots. It. We do not fight at work though. Mm. That is like, if we're having an argument about something, if we're fighting on the way to work, as soon as that car door closes and we're walking into the practice, it's done. Yep. And it's done until that car door opens up and we go back home. Yeah. And that's kind of where that professionalism yep. and practice, line is drawn. Practice wise too. Like if it gets heated in practice, it's, it's just one of those things like, okay, 
let's address this at a later time. Like we got people to serve, yeah. we got people to take care of, they're a higher priority than our egos are. Oh my God. And so this needs to be kiboshed mm -hmm. for the time being. And we will pick it up later if that's what yeah. it means. But normally what we found is if we do that, when we come and pick it back up later, we're both in a way more rational state yeah. and out of our brainstem and back into our frontal lobe Your to where we can stem. actually have rational conversation. Yeah. 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 I think it's so important. It is. Obviously. Um, other things that are really big for us is communication. So we... Um, and setting the expectation, which is also something that we learned from Dr. Amy Spolstra, um, through focus training, we've both done focus level one and two, um, and we're focus certified, which is really, really cool. But it also taught us a lot about brain development, like a lot more about brain development, especially than I knew previously. And a lot of that for me, a lot of the realization for me was that I know that Ryan needs a specific level of prediction for him to be high, per, like to uh, high functioning. Yeah. yeah, high functioning. Thank you. Uh, and so, if like we've now made it a point since focus, and I need that same level of prediction because we both have ideas of what's going to happen for the day in our mind. Or like, oh, we have a full open Saturday. Like we're going to do X, Y, and Z. That's what I'm thinking. But he has a completely different plan. And we both get upset when that plan doesn't work. So Google calendar is king. Whoever's stuff is on the calendar first, that's what wins. Um, and then also setting the expectation for the day, for the week. Yep. It's like, this is our, this is our top priority, right? Like, do you agree? Yep. Yes, no, if no, why? Let's talk through this. And then we set our priorities and our schedules accordingly. Yep. So there aren't hurt feelings. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We know you're getting up on time. I know you're at one. Th we're over one thirty now. No, we're good. We're good. This was awesome. This was so much fun. And I, 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 I love listening to great aspiring and actual entrepreneurs doing it, living it. And I liked what you said, Dr. Ryan. It's like, it, this is your life, right? Like this is your life. You don't, you don't clock in and clock out and just stop talking about it because then ne nothing really would ever get done and you wouldn't be very successful. <laughs> and it's really cool to see how different people jive. But I think it's also really important that you guys mentioned and you have to find your own communication style, whatever that is between you and your spouse, no matter if they're helping out in the practice or not, even if that's you coming home and to, you know, to your spouse or them coming home to you, whatnot. And it's like, do, how much do you talk about the practice? Right. Cause they weren't there. If they weren't there the whole day, they don't know what was going on. And so it's like, that's a whole nother conversation of like, Hey, what is that like? Right. And, and so it's really important to open that communication up, but also be really open to just learning this different stuff and saying, I, and, and admitting, right? Like getting the, putting those egos on the shelf and saying, I am this way and I like to be this way. I like things like this. And then you like things like this. Let's stay in our lanes. Let's do our tasks and let's get things done. And that's how you see the, the most amount of people. That's how you see the best results. And that's how that, then people in the actual practice as well see that. And it, it reciprocates through the entirety of the practice, um, which is pretty cool as well. So I love everything that you guys said. I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being on the podcast tonight. It has been an honor. It has been a pleasure as always. Um, it was it was great to get you guys both seated seated down and um, actually have a conversation about practice as a couple and just chiropractic in general, growing your practice into now almost going on four years coming in April, which is amazing. Um, and so thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all of those that stuck around from the very beginning yeah. to now. Yeah. I am Woo. super impressed. I absolutely love it. Um, if you, if you like this, like it, share it, love it, comment, um, and keep asking questions. Dr. Ryan and Cassidy will be happy to answer them. I will be happy to answer anything that I can. And also thank you so much for supporting the legendary chiropractor, everything that we're trying to do. And um, I am in the works of completely redeveloping our uh, website, which is going to be amazing. And we are working on just getting that whole platform solidified and out to the all of chiropractic, no matter if you're a prospective chiropractic student, current chiropractic student, or even if you are a graduate recent or even 40 years out, the legendary chiropractor is going to be the virtual one-stop shop for everything chiropractic. So I love and appreciate you guys. I love and appreciate all of you watching. Thank you for being here and thank you for watching this. 
as always, guys, go enjoy those beers and um, enjoy yeah. the night, right? Don't And don't overcook the cookies, right? I think that's what the yep. moral of the yeah. story is. <laughs> I love it. Bye, guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Bye, honey. We'll see you. Thanks, Johnny. Of course.